So in the last video, I kind of had trouble holding down the workpiece while making the cut. So I've modified my toggle clamps to have a slot in the middle, which makes it easier to go over these modified 5 16 inch bolts, like so. And with the slot, I don't need to undo the entire bolt to clamp these down. And from these low profile toggle clamps, I've modified them to be high profile so that they have a clamping capacity of 90 millimeters. And I'll be using that to clamp down this chunk of wood, which I'll be using for the accuracy test. And now all I've got to do is to make a template for this large tenon. I want to make a huge mortise and tenon just like how Matthias did. So here I am making a template for the tenon. I can then cut some scrap plywood for the side wall of the mortise template. To ensure that the theoretical mortise fits on the tenon, I'm using the tenon as a template when gluing on the side walls of the mortise. I've got half of it clamped down and I'll come back with the other half in 15 minutes. I've changed the piece of wood I was going to use for the test cut because that one just had too many cracks in it so instead I'm going to use this for the tenon and this for the mortise. Kind of expected, but this doesn't fit at all. And I'm going to try it without the tape on the bearing this time because I had the tape on the bearing the whole time. And just like all the mortise and tenons that I've tested so far without tape on the bearing, it fits very loosely. Very loosely. However, if I actually put test 1 into test 2, I actually get a really decent fit. Yup, and with the pop as well. So I'm not really sure what is actually wrong here. Um, and this same thing actually happens for test 2 and test 1 if I put these two together. So I guess the tape kind of makes a difference, but if I actually need a tape around a bearing to make the mortise and tenons fit, then there's definitely something wrong with the pentagraph. I reckon my main problem would be twists and links because I didn't actually jig it up when gluing the links together to ensure that the shafts are in one plane. I've got an 8mm thick piece of glass on my workbench and two pieces of melamine to raise it up a little bit. And I've set my short link on top of it with a dial in the can in its corner to check for any twist or any noticeable movement and so far I think we are pretty much perfect and now I'm going to check whether they are the correct distance apart so this is 189 and 189 minus 5 minus 3 is 181 and they're supposed to be 180 millimeters apart. 
So one of them is off by one millimeter. I think it's the 10 millimeter one because I had a little bit of trouble lining up the holes when putting the rod through. And the other side, yep, this one is 188, which gives us 180 between centers, which is perfect. So I just need to change that one. To really drill the hole, I'll have to fill it up with a piece of wood first. And I could have just used a dowel like this one to fill it up. But I don't actually really like that idea because when you're re-drilling a hole, you're drilling partly side grain and partly end grain. And that can cause the drill bit to wander off slightly. So instead, I'm going to make some dowels with the grain in the same orientation as these links. Right, so now checking the long link, and this one seems to have 0.02 millimeter of twist, and I think that's big enough to re drill the holes. Just kidding. Right, now checking whether they're at the correct distance apart, and I'm using my ruler in combination with my calipers to do this. And, and I think I'm 0.3 of a millimeter off, and I think that's good enough. Checking the other side. And this seems to be just perfect. Now testing the operator link, and I think I found where the error came from. So one millimeter of twist. Now that's unacceptable. 24.3. And 25.5. That one definitely needs to be re-drilled. For the round amount, I can't really see any twist in this and it seems to have the right distance apart. By right now the glue on the downs have dried and I can trim them almost flush on a bandsaw. Then I can finish it off with my chisels. To ensure that the new hole is in plane with the rest of the holes, I've placed it on three points and now I'll just have to mark it out with a 10mm dowel marker. That was an epic fail because I should have waited much longer for the glue to dry because it just popped right off and it kind of didn't really make a difference whatsoever. Alright, it's the next day and let's try it out again. So the distance between the two should be 172. I hate everything. Now let's check the operator lever. When I marked out a hole location, I accidentally used a 10mm dowel marker, and now it's 2mm off centre. Steven, you did it again. So now I'm going to wait for the glue to dry, and meanwhile I'm going to mount my new switches, and also do a little bit of decorating work. No twist, and 174, yes, finally! Oh, so that's the link done. Oh. 
There's no twist. Good start. And 172. Yes! Finally! Yes! Oh my god, I waited so long for this. 